So here we're going to be looking at how to calculate the pH of a given weak acid or weak base solution. Here is a common list of weak acids and you pretty much just need to memorize them because you need to be able to identify if a given acid is either a weak acid or a strong acid because the calculations used for each are quite different. So you need to either check your textbook or ask your instructor to make sure what the actual list of weak acids are that you need to know. Because weak acids are involved in equilibrium, we can actually talk about their relative acidity. We can say that one is a stronger acid than another. And how we do this comparison is by looking at the Ka or the pKa of a given weak acid. So as the Ka increases for a weak acid, the acid strength is said to increase. And this makes sense. If you look at this generic acid equation, we realize that as Ka increases, the equilibrium is going to be pushed farther to the right, which means that we're going to have a higher concentration of hydronium. And so that's what we mean when we say one acid is stronger than the other. It means it produces a higher concentration of hydronium. So another way that we can discuss acid strength is with the pKa. And the pKa is just the negative log of the Ka. And this is commonly used to express relative acid strength in, in tables. But here the trend is uh, the opposite. So as the pKa decreases, the acid strength is said to increase. In the same way, we can compare the relative base strength of uh, weak bases by looking at a Kb or a pKb. And in the same sense as the Kb increases or the pKb decreases, the base strength is said to increase. So you can compare one weak base with another weak base. So here we're looking, looking at one of the most classic questions in acid-base chemistry where we are calculating the pH of a given concentration of a weak acid. So in this case, the weak acid is HCN. I tell you that we have a uh, one molar solution. And then because it's a weak acid, I need to give you the Ka for it, which is 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10th. And then what we're looking for is the pH. So with this, the first thing we want to do is come up with the Ka equilibrium. So here our weak acid is going to react with water to form um, Cn minus and hydronium H3O plus. And because the Ka value is very small, we can understand that very little of our HCN is going to disassociate to make Cn minus and H3O plus. So how we start out is we say we, we start with the one molar HCN and then we assume some amount of it X is disassociating and this is going to make X amount of CN minus and X amount of H3O plus. We then come up with the equilibrium expression which is products divided by reactants and remember, remember water doesn't make it into the equilibrium expression and remember our equilibrium expression is equal to Ka which is given. Then what we do is we take these theoretical values and plug them into our equilibrium expression. So x for Cn minus, x for H3O plus, and 1 minus x for HCN. And that's going to be equal to our Ka. At this point, if you were to try to solve this equation algebraically, you would have to use uh, the quadratic equation. And most chemists want to try to avoid that. There are a couple different ways we can avoid the quadratic equation. Here we're going to do the most common one, which is to assume that this x is small compared to 1.0. And later on, we're going to check and make sure that this assumption is actually uh, correct. So we assume x is small, and that simplifies our equation here. Then we can solve for x. We multiply both sides by 1, and then we multiply x and x to get x squared and then we take the square root and we get uh, x. And remember, we've defined x as being the concentration of hydronium. So when we calculate this x, that's going to be equal to the concentration of hydronium, which is 2.5 times 10 to the minus fifth. And remember, in many of these calculations, they, they, um, 
they do not ask for the concentration of hydronium. What they want is the pH. So remember the pH is negative log of the concentration of hydronium. Well, we just calculated the concentration of hydronium. We plug that in and we figure out our pH is 4.6. So now what we want to do is to take a second and make sure that the assumption that we made, that x was small, is not going to have a significant effect on our calculations. So different textbooks have different uh, equations for checking this assumption, and so this is the one that I'm going to use. You take the x value that you calculated in your uh, uh, question and divide that by the initial concentration of your weak acid. If you take uh, that uh, do the division and then multiply by 100, if that number is less than 0 0.01, then you, the assumption that x was small was, uh, was okay. So here, our x value that we calculated was 2.5 times 10 to the minus fifth, our initial concentration of HCN. We do the division and multiply by 100, we get 0 0.0025, which is smaller than 0 0.01, so our assumption that x was small um, did not have a significant effect on our in calculation of pH. So here is an initial list of weak acids and we're going to expand on the definition of, of a weak base, excuse me, weak bases that you need to know. We're going to expand on this list a little bit later, but for right now we're going to be using these three and uh, just like with the weak acids, you want to take a second and actually find out what are the weak bases that you need to know. But these are the ones that we're going to be using for this discussion. And here we've already played around with ammonia. And ethylamine and methylamine are just um, this nitrogen with a hydrogen replaced with a carbon group. So the chemistry is very similar for these three species. Here now we're going to now um, calculate the pH of a 2.0 molar solution of ethylamine. So now we're going to be looking at a KB reaction. So ethylamine was a weak base, so we need a KB for that. What we want to start out with is the KB um, equilibrium. So that is ethylamine plus water goes to make the um, protonated ethylamine and then hydroxide. And remember, uh, we know that this is a KB because hydroxide is being produced. So we then come up with our KB equilibrium expression. So that's products divided by reactants. We don't include water. And we do a similar type of disassociation. So we started with 2.0 molar ethylamine. We're going to assume some of that disassociates X. So that's going to be making X of our protonated ethylamine and X amount of hydroxide. So we take these theoretical values, we plug it into our KB equilibrium expression. And then we assume X is small to avoid the quadratic equation. So here if we get rid of this X, this equation simplifies down. So X times X gives us X squared. KB was given, so you multiply th through by 2 and then take the square root, you get the concentration of a hydroxide. So remember we defined the um, X value as being equal to the concentration of hydroxide. So here we've calculated X, so that gives us the concentration of hydroxide, which is 0 0.033 molar. And once again, that's not the answer to our question. The answer is in terms of pH. So that's very common regardless of whether you're dealing with an acid or a base. The question typically asks for a pH. So with this, we have already calculated the concentration of hydroxide. I'm then going to find the pOH, which is the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide. So we plug that number in do the calculation, we get pOH as being 1.5. And then I'm going to utilize the fact that pH plus pOH is equal to 14, or 14 minus the pOH is our pH, which is 12.5.